So yeah, like, like if you go to China and it's like a black person who was like born there yeah. you know, and they're speaking Chinese, they're like, I'm Chinese. The Chinese lady's still gonna be like, Hua. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, you're not too. Yeah. Welcome back to another phenomenal episode of The Careful Boys, where today we have Jason Chenny. Wow. Woo! With us again. Jason! 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 What's your Chinese name? Jing Chang Tao. Yeah, how do you know? <laughs> that was it. Chen Si Jun. Chen Si Jun. Chen Si Jun. Chen Su Bin. Chen. Wait, what ethnic background? What? Yes, Korean. Yes. Oh, oh, great. Okay. Yeah. Shit, my bad, Nick. He's a kimchi guy. <laughs> Anthony. Green. Hey, man. You know, people look at us and go, "You guys have no diversity, motherfucker." <laughs> we are a collection of people that's been warring for thousands of years that just got together. This is diversity, bitch. Yeah. We, yeah, we would all have different. Oh, yeah. It's because you're ignorant ass things. Everybody's Chinese in this room. And we would all have different passports if it was from our homeland. Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Seriously. We got a. Except for me and him. Well, you guys kind of. But he's a guest. If, it depends if you go on your dad's side or your mom's side, right? Yeah, no, that's true. And then you're full Taiwanese or. Full. Okay. So he would be the Taiwanese representative. Well, how, how? You could be Hong Kong or. Mainland China or I'd what? probably be mainland China. Dude. I you're, thought you're Singapore. I thought yeah, you're I Taiwanese. Singapore. I know, but you look at my my ancestry. It says fucking China. Well, it goes everybody's ancestry goes over there. Yeah. yeah. Guess what? That means all four of you guys would be <laughs> fucking Chinese then. Yeah, all Wait, all four? One, two, three. You're Chinese too? What do you think? Link. Vietnamese. <laughs> Link could be yeah, because they do a lot of Vietnamese things. So maybe you're all fucking Chinese escapees. Oh, you're yeah. fucking Chinese. Why we gotta be fucking Chinese? He's culturally Wait, Vietnamese he's though, yeah. but genetically. Well, he, his family ran away from China too. All you guys ran away from China. I don't know. A lot of a lot of our you had you guys got kicked out of China. That's wrong. different. Wrong, right? We just we just didn't want to overstay. How about this? <laughs> you guys are currently <laughs> surrounded by Chinese warships. Like how about that? That's not true. They were half this not surrounded. They're not in the full circle. The heat. I thought they were. It said all naval ships are surrounded. Yeah, but they say shit. stuff all the time. I was saying that I ate it wrong. Yeah. Okay. All right. So yeah, my grandparents moved to Vietnam from China, escaping communism. My mm. parents were born there, and then they moved to America, a refugee here, escaping communism. See, y'all are Chinese. America is becoming communist. Oh. Oh, wait, do you speak Vietnamese? Though? Hmm? My mom. My mom didn't escape. My dad tricked her. Whoa. How my mom really liked Taiwan. She was gonna stay there forever. She had a good job. But my dad was like, come to America. It's gonna be better. Wow. And then my mom came. That's so do you, do you say trick because she doesn't like it here? Well, when my mom told me when she first came, she thought America was ghetto. <laughs> so she was like, what the fuck? I thought it was supposed to be better. But Wait. it's not better. Oh. Does she still feel that? She's a lady, so you can't trust anything she says. <laughs> My mom said <laughs> it changes all the time. <laughs> sure words have never been spoken, dude. My mom was shocked when she came here. Mm -hmm. She was like, I thought America was gonna be like rich. Mm -hmm. And then, cause Japan was doing way better in like the eighties. And then when she came here, she was like, but what's there's America? so many fucking broke ass poor people. In like San Gabriel? Like I don't know where she was, but maybe in that city. But, but. Well, like, no, they did road trips to get oh, to know yeah, America, yeah. like, we but know. their image of like, they would watch movies, oh. right? Mm -hmm. oh. Like they don't have poverty, like the way that they have in America, in yeah. Japan. There's no poverty. So she can't, she never seen like oh. crackheads burning around a trash can, yeah. like, like, and then trying to stay warm. Yeah. That's uh, just she, community. Yeah, like downtown LA. She's never shit. seen like crackheads in a tent, like, oh. She's like, there's homeless people in Japan, but she's like, but it's different. Like, she's like, they actually like set up a thing and you can't really tell they're homeless. It looks like people are just like poor. Yeah, it's not like streets full of homeless people. No, and then they're working. They're, yeah. they're just like down and out. But like once in a while, you'll see a crazy dude that's like got dreadlocks in Japan and like he's like never showered, right? But she's like, that's like one guy out of millions, right? So when she was here, she's like, what the hell? And then she, another thing, she was like, there's shirtless guys running everywhere. Cause jogging wasn't a thing yet in oh. Japan. And then guys wouldn't do shirtless. She was just, I think she was like thirsting, but the, cause she was just like, oh my God, there's so many shirtless guys. 
So strong. Yeah. <laughs> so strong. American body, yeah. body meat. Look at that. Six feet, John Jones. Yeah. And the That's short the shorts and the fucking <laughs> tube socks and shit. That was that era, dude. Yeah, high shorts, beard, mustache. She's probably like, yo, they got hair on their face. <laughs> Japanese people got hair on their face. <laughs> yeah, you're right. But look. I was on a six feet white blonde dude. That's With the hair slow motion. Right. And they live, like, yeah, they're by the beach. Right. You know? Right. Yeah, they live With by the, the beach. Pit Viper glasses yeah. vibes. American flag shit. Fucking shore. headphones America, and yeah. shit. Yeah. Older yeah. Walkman. <laughs> yeah. Looking like that one pool boy from fucking Stranger Things. Yeah. Pulling up in a Mustang. Yeah. Big titty rollerblades. Oh, that sounds fire. <laughs> a little sweat on their chest. <laughs> Yeah, we had classic yeah, yeah, American yeah, cars, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. So the chest. Remember we used to have porn theaters on Hollywood Boulevard? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember that. Damn. Really? Yeah. Have you guys been? That's where Pee Wee Herman got No, but my, my dad said when he first came here, like, hookers on Hollywood Boulevard was normal. And then that was kind of like the porn place. So he had to bang a hooker. Because he was like, wanted to know what... How a vagina hooker feels? Yeah, a vagina hooker feels like. And I think he watched a porno. Oh. At Hollywood Boulevard, he's a Dallas. Shouldn't dude. you watch a porno first, right, and then right. get horny, and that's then, what then I was yeah. maybe, maybe he did it wrong, but oh, he okay. that was his Amer <laughs> '70s America experience. Wow. And then after he goes and cooks in the back of a Chinese restaurant. <laughs> mm. That's a that's a wow. good life. That sounds pretty tight, actually. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. You know what's crazy to think is back in the day, your 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 dream in America was to live the American dream, which is just to work be stable just to have a job just to have a job and be yeah. an american yeah now it's so hard now people don't even want jobs no you, you got they want to do whatever they want to do as their job which is fine but it's just like i guess the, it's so simple back the then the through line is freedom mm. you know what i mean i think it's just a different version of it now i'm not saying it's better it's just in response to the difficulty of the times no, I think it's, it's just freedom. Now. I think everybody just continues to want freedom, yeah. you know? Because I think all those people that came here, their countries aren't fucked up anymore. So, yeah. like, think about Japanese, Chinese, Vietnam, like, all of Asia. Asia's thriving right now. Mm -hmm. There's no reason to come to America rather other than, like, really they're not thriving in Vietnam. So, they're like, well, I need to come to America and, like, maybe try something else. But they're actually, like, booming in Southeast Asia. So the immigration's slowing down. But back in the day, they didn't have shit. And America was like, well, they got food. So I wanna go there and get mm -hmm. some you, food. You think there's more opportunity now in America or before? I think there's more opportunity in the world now for people of a lower class. Yeah. So like, back then, the only way for people to make it past their class was education. Yeah. So you had to go to school, you had to crush it in university, you had to try your best to become a doctor, lawyer, engineer. That's why most Asian parents that are from poverty, they go, you gotta be a doctor, you got That was their only way to surpass a class. Or you have sex with the princess. Or you fuck mm -hmm. a princess. Maybe you find one. Also though, like even though there's, cause I agree with Joe, there's just more opportunity in general. So especially if we're talking about Asians, mm -hmm. like what Asian opportunities were, uh, in those countries back then mm -hmm. was like not so much right so that's why people wanted to come here because for the most part there was kind of an equal playing field now i think kids born in today's generation asian specifically have just as much opportunity in all those other countries as mm -hmm. well but if you happen to make it in your industry in america everywhere knows you're you're especially because of the economic standard mm -hmm. It's like, you're probably getting paid more. So oh. if you did decide to go back to your home mother country or something yeah. like that, you're in a better situation. Yeah. If you were at the same level, let's say in your home country oh. and you came here, right. you would still start at a lower level. You know, right. yeah, yeah, either the, the, the strength yeah. of your uh, your dollar, your economy, yes. or just like the, the nature of like how you can communicate with people or just the working class, whatever it is. People who succeed in America in your craft have a better shot of succeeding in their mother country in that same industry. Dude, this is such a good podcast, man. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's, no, why, that's why I've been around for a long time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, this is this is nice. Except unless you're that one Japanese dude who wide bodies Porsches. Oh, that guy? He travels the world yeah. and he yeah. just like. That'd be sick. Oh, yeah. All, all, he just. <laughs> 
<laughs> if you're an anomaly, you're an anomaly. That's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. He's a freak. It, it don't matter. Your $100,000 in Japan is $100,000. Yeah, your $100,000 in America is $100,000. Whatever it is. What's up, guys? If you do not know, we have a Patreon. I want you to click in our description and go over there and check out all the beautiful stuff we have for you. It's super duper access for only our super duper exclusive lovers like yourselves. You're gonna be getting one never been released director's cut every week. But not only that, you get another fresh too hot for YouTube video. We say some crazy shit on there. Two videos a week, but not only that, you get to join our Discord and come chat with us, direct access. We're in there, the whole Careful Boys in there, jumping in, dogpiling on people, laughing, playing, joking, whatever, and you can come talk to us directly. So if you like what we do and what we've been doing for the past 10 years, please support our Patreon and click the link below to get all the details. There's so many different tiers, you can see it when you click that. So even if it's the same opportunity, America is still like looked as the tip of the spear. Especially as an Asian. It's and the we're megaphone. Talking about, like, we're talking it's about entertainment as well. Yeah. So being, being the entertainment capital of the world, right. if you're an Asian American and you make it an entertainment in America, mm. you're on a whole different pedestal when you go back to Asia. My, my dad yeah. my dad will always told me to go back to Taiwan like years, and all the time, uh, but um, but it, it is. Where is he? Is he here or in he's in Taiwan? Oh, he just come back. Yeah, he said come back. It's gonna be great. Like more opportunity, and especially you speak English, maybe they'll use you more. As a translator? Huh? <laughs> what? And then if they were to use you more, if you had to, like start from the bottom, uh -huh. because with your English you can be a translator if you wanted. But to. I do think that's a good job. <laughs> the difficulty in job. Asia. <laughs> The difficulty in Asia is, um, what do you call it? Like, it's a small group of people that are successful in their families and they have a control of everything. Like they would say that about America, which is true, but there's still a lot of opportunity for like a person to be self-made. I think out there, you just have these strong fucking families that own everything. And then like, it's like, so, if you can't come up, but it's just less is 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 um it's like we have the same things in America, but there's so much more that like you'll be under the radar. Over there, they're gonna notice, and then it's just highly competitive. You think we would always? You think America will? How much longer do you think we would be the tip of the spear in most of the industries? And who do you think is the next country that might take over the status of that? I think China's trying really hard to. Oh, do you think they're trying really hard? I think China's probably second place, but I think they're trying really, really hard. In to. which industry? Well, I think the I think all industries is first controlled by entertainment. Then I think Cause Korea. Because that's the that's the message. Well, wow. but America Studios aren't trying to get their movies played in Korea. Mm -hmm. They're trying to get their movies played in China. So I feel like if you control people's minds, you control the world. Oh right. my god. God, man. This is such a good podcast, man. No, that's that's how it is, right? Like, that's why but people never, have the American dream or, like, patriotism. Like, all these things are... That's why movie first. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, my God. You ever see Armageddon? Huh? You ever see Armageddon? I've, I've heard of Armageddon. Like Wolf on Wall Street, Street, you know, shit like that. The whole, like, American dream rags to riches. Yeah. It's like, it's because we've made so much content right. like that. So the world sees America a certain way. And that's anyone so that aspires crazy. to be that... Like all the best of the world, that, they come here. That's why. That's why Joe was saying that, like um, pe the American dream thing. People come and they're like, "This is not the thing." But yeah, then yeah. we uh, market it as like, "This is the best." It doesn't thing. matter what's real. Yeah, what matters matter. what people think. Yeah. It is what's real, though. It's just the difference in America uh, as opposed to so many other countries is you really do have a chance to be like the most gangster mobile here. Yeah. yeah. But at the yeah, same yeah. time, if you fail, nobody's gonna help you. No, but, mm. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you're the smartest yeah. engineer in India, you're probably a amongst like. A thousand other people just as smart. Right. You come here and you like destroy a classroom in USC. You're going. To, you're going to work at Apple. Yeah. Mm. And then you're set yeah. for life. You're. Yeah. You're definitely the president of some tech company yeah. in Silicon Valley. Yeah, that's true. My mom calls America the country of many mistakes. Like so, she like she's <laughs> like you can make a lot of mistakes and still make it. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, for sure. Cause like, and like, we're the brain drain for all other yeah. countries. So like all the, the smartest, country. all everyone 
comes here because they're like, well, if I stay in my home country, you know, there's like, I'm not gonna get paid as much, I'm not gonna. And they're a genius in their home country. Yeah. But yeah. there's just, everyone else is also a genius. But we have so many dumbasses here that their genius <laughs> yeah. is crazy. <laughs> Sounds like we're good at recruiting, dude. We are, we're the best we're recruiter. The best recruiters. Mm -hmm. We sell the best, we're the best salesmen of the world. And then, yeah. as long, and then if we can control that and if we can stay being the best bouncers, which is what we are too, then I think we stay up top for a long, for a long, long. Well, I think the definition is always changing too, because like, our marketing's like, hey, we're a nation of immigrants, right? I would say like, maybe up until 20 years ago, it was, it was like, Anglo's at the forefront. But then now the definition is changing of what an American is. Like it's always been, hey, if you come here, you work, and then you follow into the culture, you're an American, Depend doesn't matter what race you are. But I think like, now it's even more true than when I was growing up. Cause when I was growing up, it was like, um, people already automatically assume you're a foreigner. Because yep. uh, they don't look at you as like, oh, you're an actual American. They'll be like, oh, where are you from? It's like, motherfucker, do you sound, do you hear a fucking accent when I speak, right? But they're just ignorant cause they live in a bubble. But now they won't question the fact, like, especially from the right, like back in the day, Republicans were just more like Ang Anglo dominant culture, right? But if you're, I saw this clip of a Chinese immigrant lady talking about how she's not gonna give up her guns because she grew up in communist China. And she goes, can you guarantee, she was oh. talking to a politician. Oh, I saw, I saw she was like, can you guarantee to me that the American government will never turn on us like the communist, like communist China? And then the politician was like, I can't. And she goes, then why the fuck would I give away my guns? And then so I was like, and then all in the comments were like, that's an American, that's a true blooded American. And I was like, I would have never thought that there would be a day where a Chinese lady with a thick ass accent and all these like white dudes are like saying like, oh, that's a full blooded American right there. <laughs> that is the cool thing about America is that it's actually, if you think about the purest definition, it is driven by an ethos rather than by what it looks like. You know, like what 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 it means to be American. You control your own mm -hmm. shit. You're in charge of your own life, mm -hmm. and so you can be a Chinese lady with a crazy accent that literally came here yesterday. Yeah. But you could be more American than someone that's fourth generation, who fucking hates this country. Well, like yeah. the college kids. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like blue hair, all that. Yeah. They're not American. They gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a. And then when you think about other countries, their country is tied to ethnicity. So like, mm -hmm. it's gonna be hard as fuck for like a white or black kid that was born and raised in Japan for Japanese people to look at them and go, oh, you're Japanese. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, they don't even look at me as Japanese. Totally. So yeah, like, like if you go to China and it's like a black person who was like born there yeah. and they're speaking Chinese, they're like, I'm Chinese. The Chinese lady's still gonna be like, Hua. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, you're not, dude. Yeah. I follow yeah. one of them that's like that. And he just straight up goes into like those uh, street food shops and he just orders random food and all the grandmas were like, what the fuck? <laughs> the don't, there's no hate, the there's way. no discrimination. Oh, they're they're like, Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's a black dude oh, with the, black with the black dude with the crazy speech. accent too. So good. Like the, the Chinese that have- But hey, area. do we get the same treatment when, when white people do, they go, you can't speak English. You know, yeah. it's like, we don't get the fucking same. Yeah. <laughs> no, they know right off what you drive and what you wear sometimes. A truck, they're gonna be like, hmm, American certified, check one. <laughs> and then you start wearing like boots or, you know, vans and they're like, hmm, he came up from a white country. I mean, I mean, more like a white people high school, check two. And then they see if you have a Glock. <laughs> they're like, American. American. Like, that's, that's a check one, he's an American. All right, what's like foreigner? What are they wearing? What are they driving? Yeah, yeah. What are they pulling up in first? What kind of car? What's a foreigner? Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. You guys ready for this one? Let's yeah. go. <laughs> they pull up in the Hyundai. <laughs> I can't go anywhere with this. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know, I really don't know what a foreigner is anymore. Yeah, these That's days true. it's- These days it's hard. You're it's right. very mixed. Uh, a Chinese foreigner? They pull up in a Bugatti, and you're like, oh shit. 
We come out. But the thing they're is, they're wearing like supreme social shirt, yeah. <laughs> like off white Louis yeah. Vuitton collab, everything. And None of it matches, <laughs> but it's all expensive. But sometimes foreigners love America way more than the people that were born here. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. I got a foreigner now. They pull up in the convertible Mustang. Obviously, it's rented from Enterprise or Hertz. <laughs> Second of Keep all, thinking about the ones in Hawaii. <laughs> no, 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 no. They pull up in a uh, convertible Mustang and they're wearing a Ferrari outfit. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Ferrari <laughs> shoes. Right, and they're wearing a fucking saddlebag. You're like, yo, that yes, shit out yeah. of date, man. That's Get rid true. Of that. and then you, hey, <laughs> you nailed it. Dude. Look at their shoes. It's a soccer <laughs> shoes, like the super skinny one with yeah. looks like McDonald's. That's a foreigner, That's right? <laughs> soccer <laughs> shoes. Soccer yeah. shoes. Yes. This is the most, <laughs> I, I guess, I don't know if the word is equality that we've ever seen. Because, like, let's say if Tulsi Gabbard did become president, I can see her being the face of America. Where maybe even 10 years ago or 20 years ago, that would be unfathomable. No, yeah. like, you had to be white. Yeah, you had to be, white. yeah. So that's that's pretty crazy. I think even like uh, Andrew Yang, like if he was um, or Vivek, if they were to become president, I'm like, oh, I can see that. Mm -hmm. Where like just even 20 years ago, I'd be like. Dude, that's impossible. Yeah. yeah, I think it's crazy that Shout we're seeing more non-whites being accepted as the face of America. Yeah. Because, um, well, one, I think when it comes to branding, Democrats did a better job for a long time of being like, hey, dude, fuck that racism stuff, right? And we can go back and forth about the like, true, like who the true racist is, but just image wise, Republicans never played the identity politics game. So they kind of just accepted that they're the racist camp. They never fought against it. They never, even mm. though there were like black members in the Republican party or even like non-white, but it was always this image of like, we are the uh, Anglo party. And no, that makes sense. you know what I mean? And that then like, sense. and then the Democrats did also a good job of if you vote with them, you're also a race traitor. Mm -hmm. You're no longer a minority. You're no longer backing up your own like race. Now you're like jumping on and being a white person's pet. So I was like that. That makes sense. That's been, I think a lot of people actually think that and believe that. Cause it used to be a thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes sense. That, but the whole time they're just protecting the American citizens. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I think the party keeps changing because the people and the groups change, right? Because if you think about the right and the left, like the groups that were in power, they die. And then new ideas and new people come in. So like, think about who represents the Republican party today. Like Ben Shapiro, he's a Jewish guy. I never would have thought a Jewish guy would be the face of Republican party. They're usually liberal, right? You have uh, like the face of the NRA, uh, Colin, uh, Nor? Nor? yeah, black dude. Black yeah. yeah, you never would have thought right? that. Uh, Candace Owens, a black girl mm -hmm. that's like a big voice. Yeah, conservative. Like, and, and then and then it's like, it's a different. I think it's a different party now because the Democrats were, they used to be for the working party, like the working class. So like, fire uh, police, like fire, like dock workers. Uh, manufacturing they used to be left-wing but then now it's like with defund the police and everybody they're like we're gonna go Republican 30 40 years ago I wouldn't ever think that cops would be Republican because they were always the party of like the working class mm -hmm. and then now they don't represent the working class now they represent like university students and like you know, I don't know. I think so. I think it's gonna keep changing. Evolution. Like, yeah, because like think about the Republicans, right? Like in Hawaii, the Republicans were the rich uh, plantation owners, and the mm -hmm. only way to battle the plantation owners was be a Democrat. Mm -hmm. And then I think that was the first party that let Asians kind of have a voice and fight against the white plantation owners, and that's why there's a lot of loyalty for the Asians there with the Democratic Party, because that's where they got their foot in the door. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying like, good. there's like shit like that and it keeps changing. Yeah. This is a good podcast, huh? Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's a nice one. <laughs> Would you subscribe and listen to it? I, I do How often do you listen to oh, JK? Thank you. Um, 